Naturian anarchism is ahead of us. Naturian anarchism had a very brief existence. Founded in 1894 in Paris, around the draftsman Émile Gravel, it will gradually die out towards the beginning of the 20th century. Its perspective was as follows. One can perpetually decapitate kings, depose emperors, disembowel presidents of the republic. The situation will remain the same as long as there are mines, factories, and construction sites, as long as the artificial established during centuries of slavery is considered as the basis of a system of life. There will be exploitation of man by man, there will be despoilment, not to mention the continuous and worsening degradation of nature. Some consider today that the idea of degrowth would make resurface this perspective, except that the Naturian anarchism did not aim at an economic degrowth, but well the massive desertion of the economy. The idea of a human progress conditioned by industrialization was radically rejected. Because with industrialization, only industrialization progresses and not the human. On the contrary, the movement called for a return to nature as the exclusive principle of development and blossoming. We quote, You will no longer be forced to do any other work than that which it will give you pleasure to do for your own personal use and satisfaction. No longer will you have to do the tiring and repulsive work that makes you machine men, bent over day after day and for years on the same job. You will find in the great nature all that you can decide. You will finally enjoy in your turn the immense riches that she contains. We think that far from being outdated or definitely ranked among the precursors of the ecologism, even if it is decreasing, the naturalistic anarchists were right on the essential which holds in two points. The first is that the industrial civilization is condemned to disappear or to make humanity disappear. The second is that the return to nature must be radically rethought as a return to the foundation of freedom. On the first point, to speak like Debord, we are preparing for the worst and fighting for the best. As for the return to nature, this is the vast program that awaits humanity if it frees itself from the tyranny of all powers. It is obviously not a question of becoming hunter-gatherers again, if not hunter-gatherers of justice, beauty and love. It is not a question either of reducing the human being to instinct, as if nature had not given him creativity. And finally, it is not a question either of flocking ourselves in a limited conception an experience purely physical and material, as if nature and we did not have infinitely more things to make together. For we are absolutely natural, and the artificial itself is only a transitory and recyclable product of what nature can do. We are absolutely natural in the broadest sense in which Spinoza understood it, or much further back in time, Anaximander. Nature is our home, our adventure, our root, and our elevation. We are absolutely natural in our finitude, participating in its infinite renewal. This is why the architectures of the future, whether material or metaphysical, ingenuous or poetic, or all at once, will still be branches and twigs of the tree of nature, and we will make nests for all the birds, and we will be 
like birds. And finally, anarchy too is absolutely natural. It neither distributes nor delegates the least principle of authority to anyone. As Diderot remarked, to whom we leave the conclusion here, we quote, Freedom is a gift from heaven, and each individual of the same species has the right to enjoy it as soon as he enjoys reason. If nature has established any authority, it is paternal power. But paternal power has its limits. And in the state of nature, it would end as soon as the children were able to behave. All other authority comes from another origin than nature.